everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regents. We're doing this one question at a time. Here is question 32. Josh is making a square based fire pit out of concrete for his backyard, as modeled by the right prism below. He plans to make the outside walls of the fire pit 3.5 feet on each side with a height of 1.5 feet. The concrete walls of the fire pit are going to be 9 inches thick. So be careful here already I could see that we're dealing with inches and feet. So we have two different units of measurement. Okay, let's look at what this question's now asking us. If a bag of concrete mix will fill 0.6 feet cubed and state the minimum number of bags needed to build a fire pit. So there are multiple parts to this question, but the main thing we're gonna wanna do is to find the volume of the whole prism. And then because there's a hole in it, we're gonna need to figure out how much volume there is in the hole. So I'm just gonna write out the steps we're gonna be taking. So. So first we'll find the volume of the entire prism. Then we're going to find the volume of this hole in here. There's more steps to this, but we'll write them as we go. So let's first find the volume of the entire prism itself. So we know that the volume of a prism is just going to be the length times the width times the height, right? So if we know that the length is three and a half feet, times the height is one and a half feet. And then up here, it's also three and a half feet. So we're just ignoring, we're just pretending this is a one whole box right now without this hole in the middle. So if you plug that into our, your calculator, we'll get 18.375 feet cubed. This was our first step. Now let's find the volume of the hole, this, uh, this volume in here. It's another rectangular prism, right? So how do we find this height? So if we kind of take out that hole, we kind of have this little box that we're finding the volume of. So if we're just bringing down these values, we, have, we know that the height's gonna be the same, 1.5 feet. Right, this is going to be the same in here. So we have 1.5 feet, and now over here, three and a half feet. That doesn't apply here, but we know that each of these side lengths are going to be nine inches. They're nine inches on either side. We know we're going to subtract nine inches on either side from three and a half feet to get what this length is. So we have three and a half feet. Minus, so that's in inches, so we want to add them together. So we have 9 plus 9, that's going to give us 18 inches in total that we're subtracting. So instead of writing 18 inches to get them into the same unit of measurement, we're just going to do 18 over 12 because there's 12 inches in one foot. If we plug this in, 3.5 minus 18 divided by 12, we're going to get 2. So this is 2 feet, this length right here. So two feet, and up here is two feet. So now we can find the volume of this. We have two times 1.5 times two, and this is now all in feet. And we have six feet cubed. So now what we wanna do is find, so we're filling the concrete part. So we're filling in this main part. So this was the hole, but we're filling in the rest of this. We wanna find out the volume of this concrete area. We're gonna subtract the hole from the whole prism. And we'll be left with the concrete. So if we take 18.375, the volume of the entire prism, as if there was no hole in it, minus the hole inside where the fire is gonna go, we're gonna be left with 12.375 feet cute. Okay, so now we, we're almost done. They're asking for, so if a bag of concrete will fill 0.6 feet cubed determined to save the minimum number of bags needed. So now we're just going to divide. So we already have it in the right units. We're just going to take 12.375 and divide it by 0.6 feet cubed. And we're left with 20.625. So we would need, we can't have 20.625 bags. So what we're going to do is round up and say 21 bags. And that's our answer. Question 33. A telephone pole 
11 meters tall needs to be stabilized with a support beam as modeled below. Two conditions for proper support are, one, the beam reaches the telephone pole at 70% of the telephone pole's height above the ground, and two, the beam forms a 65 degree angle with the ground. And then we have these two questions, so let's focus on each of these bullet points first. So it says, the first bullet point says the beam reaches the telephone pole at 70% of the telephone pole's height above the ground. So what that's saying is the height over here is gonna be 70% of the total length of the telephone pole. So if the whole telephone pole is 11 meters, we're just gonna wanna take 70% of the telephone pole to find this height. So 11 times 0.7 will give us 7.7. .7. So we know that this length, this height of this um, triangle here is gonna be 7.7 .7 meters. It also tells us the beam forms a 65 degree angle with the ground. So the beam with the ground. So here's the ground, right? This is the angle we're gonna be, they're talking about and this is 65 degrees. And now we could look at our question. So the first question says, determine and state to the nearest tenth of a meter the length of the support beam that meets these conditions for this telephone pole. So the length of the support beam. So that means we're gonna be looking for the hypotenuse value, right? This value, the, the length of the support beam. So the support beam is over here. It even tells us that. So we're looking for the length of the support beam. So I'm just gonna label that X. This is gonna be a Sokotoa problem a trigonometry problem because we have this right angle and we're looking for a missing value. So in relation to this 65 degree angle, if we're looking for the hypotenuse value, this is the hypotenuse value, and then we have the value of the height, which is the opposite value. So we have the hypotenuse and the opposite. So we're gonna be using sine. So we have sine of 65 degrees is equal to the opposite 7.7 .7 all over the hypotenuse, which is x. And now we can just use some cross-multiplying and find the value of x. Plug it into our calculator. They want this rounded to the nearest tenth of a meter. So we're just gonna do that x.5 meters. So that's our answer for part A. Now let's look at the next part of this question. Determine and state to the nearest tenth of a meter how far the support beam must be placed from the base of the pole to meet these conditions. So now we're looking for a different value. We know that this value, so we can fill this in 8.5 meters. They're looking for the base of this triangle. Looking, I'm gonna label this A. So there's different ways to solve. So you can do another trig function or you could even realize since we have, we found this 8.5 value, we can actually just do Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we'll have a squared, which we don't know, plus b squared, which is the other leg, which is 7.7 .7 squared, is equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is 8.5 squared. And then we'll just solve this. And again, they want this to the nearest tenth of a meter, which works out perfectly because it comes to 3.6 meters. And that's our answer. Question 34. The coordinates of the vertices of quadrilateral ABCD are 0, 4, 3, 8, 8, 3, and 5, negative 1. Prove that ABCD is a parallelogram but not a rectangle. So before we even get into how to do that, let's graph this thing out. Okay, so we have our quadrilateral, and we wanna prove that it's a parallelogram, but not a rectangle. So what we're gonna to need to do here is prove that opposite sides are parallel, 
but the slopes are not negative reciprocals of each other because we don't want them to be right angles. Because if they were no negative reciprocals, they'd be right angles, which would mean they'd be rectangles. So let's write out what we're gonna need to do. Now that we know what to do, let's take pairs of different points, make sure, making sure the opposite sides are parallel. So let's try B, C first. Let's take the coordinates of B, 3, 8, and C, 8, 3. And to find the slope, we're just going to do the change of Y over the change of X. Okay, so the slope over here is equal to negative one. Now let's make sure it's parallel to line AD, the opposite side, and find the slope of AD. And we get the same thing, this checks out. So slope over here also equals negative one. So let's write that out, line BC, is parallel to AD. So that's one pair of parallel sides. Now let's try the other pair of parallel sides. So let's try BA first. We get four thirds, so the slope over here for BA is equal to four thirds. And now let's find the other slope across from it and make sure that's also equal to four thirds with line DC. So here we also get four thirds. So we know that these lines are parallel, opposite lines are parallel, so we can write in a little sentence about that. Up here we did the work of why this is a parallelogram, but we have to explicitly say why this can't be a rectangle. So let's just write a sentence. So down here, I just summarized that since slopes of AB and BC are not negative reciprocals of one another, they are not perpendicular to each other and don't have right angles. Therefore, ABCD is a parallelogram and can't be a rectangle. So that's our answer. Question 35. In the diagram below a quadrilateral fact, BR intersects AT at E, AF is parallel to CT. So let's write that, mark that down on our figure here, AF is parallel to CT and AF is congruent to CT. AF is also congruent to CT. Prove that AB times TE is equal to AE times TR. Based on what we're trying to prove true, we're going to need to prove the triangle ABE is similar to triangle ERT. This cross multiplication that shows these sides are in proportion true. Since they gave us uh, this information on AF and CT, we could actually say this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And then what we're gonna do is use that to say AT is a transversal and that alternate interior angles of this triangle are equal and therefore they're gonna be similar. So let's do this one step at a time. And if it doesn't make sense yet, hopefully it will as we keep going. 
So first, we're always gonna list out our statements and reasonings. So first, we're going to list out everything they gave us, everything up here. And all this information just came from here and we, for the reasoning is just going to be given. So up next, we can state that this is a parallelogram. And our reasoning for that is that when a quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides that are parallel and congruent, it's a parallelogram, which they gave us in the given. So we know that this is true. So if this is a parallelogram, which it is, we just proved that true, if these opposite sides are parallel and congruent, that means these opposite sides are also going to be parallel and congruent. So let's write that down. So AC is going to be parallel to FT. So we said they're parallel, which means we can actually use AT as transversal. So if, if AT is cutting this pair of parallel lines, that means it's going to form all these angle relationships that form when there's a transversal. So that means using, in this case, alternate interior angles, we could say this angle A is going to be equal to this angle T over here. And this angle B is going to be congruent to angle R. And then we're going to use that to show that triangle ABE is similar to triangle ERT, which will lead us to this proportion where we could cross multiply and ultimately prove this true. But let's step back one thing at a time and let's label our alternate interior angles. So we have angle BAE is congruent to angle RTE. And we can also say that angle ABE is congruent to angle TRE. And our reasoning for this are parallel lines cut by a transversal form alternate interior angles that are congruent. Okay, the next step. So now we can say that these two triangles, ABE and ERT, are similar to each other. Which means we can now set up a proportion, which will eventually lead to a cross multiplication because the sides are gonna be in proportion to each other. So if we take AB, over AE, set it equal to TR over TE. So all we're saying here is AB, which is over here, over AE, over here, and we're setting it equal to TR over here on the other triangle over T. So you can see how they're related to each other here. This is the base of the first triangle. This is the base of the bottom triangle is in proportion to TR and then AE on the side of the smaller triangle and then T. Okay, so we have our proportion and the reasoning for this is that corresponding sides of similar triangles are in proportion.
And lastly, we can cross multiply. So we're going to get And the reasoning for this is the product of means equals product of extremes. And that's our answer. So I hope you found this review helpful. I hope you do well on your test. If you have any questions, please let me know. Good luck and happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.